Well before? No, you? Yes, I was stationed out here when I was an ops. Oh, were you in the RAF? Well, in fact, I was. Oh, I thought I recognised a RAF type. I was in the RAF. Good show. Let that be a bond between us. If you know what I mean. You been to the holiday camp before? I come every year. What oh, wonderful! You love it. Always something going on. They got two marvellous dance halls. Do you dance? You will before the week's out. Here, Dad, you take him a minute. Now, wipe his hands first. I've got the best suit on. Here, let Granny wipe your hands, Ducky. Let Granny wipe your hands. Oh. Let me have him, Mum. No, you went him all the way down. I'd like to. No, he's all right. Why don't you let him have a old skin if he wants him? Because I wanted to have a proper holiday. That's what she's come for. Well, what do you think I've come for? <laughs> calling all cameras. Welcome to all our new guests. We hope you've had a good journey and that you're ready for a cup of tea that's waiting for you in the reception room. The red coat will show you the way. Jack. Where to get your chalet keys and anything else you want to know about the camera. And don't fuss, Mother. You'll, you'll get them all right. Where's Harry? Oh, Harry, there you are. Oh, worry, Mum. What about this? Well, that says lasses. That can't mean me. It certainly don't mean me. It's either one thing or the other, love. Oh, dear. Harry? Harry! Uh, yes, Dad? There you are. This is you. Thanks, Dad. See you later. Oh, Joe, I wish we was all going to be together. I don't like them splitting us up like this. Oh, come off it, Mother. You're always worrying about something. Hello. Hello. We're going to be shipmates? That's right. I'll toss your fruit chooses the bunks. You call. Uh, heads. It's a tie-up. I'll stick to this one. You have that one, okay? Okay. My name's uh, Gardner, Jimmy Gardner. Oh, mine's Harry Huggett. Here by yourself? No worse luck. Had to bring the family with me. What's your girlfriend as well? Not likely. I've come for holiday. Gosh, is all that chocolate? Yep. Four months ration. All counted. Saved it up for my girlfriend. What? Is she coming here? Yeah, she should be in by now. I don't go for dames myself. Through with women, eh? That's right. Oh, well, don't you worry. You'll fall over the curb one day, same as I did. Well, I'm going to see if she's come aboard. Ah, good afternoon. Afternoon. Is that my bed? Yes, I left you the one in the corner. Of you. Cigarette? Nothing. Fond of music, I see. Eh? Yes. Well, I do a bit of strumming myself. Mostly boogie woogie stuff. What on earth are you going to do with all that? Play it. What, here? Yes, I'm deputising for the orchestra cleaners for a week. Oh, that's not much of a holiday for you, is it? Oh, I don't mind. Do you know this part of the world? No. It's not exactly Monte Carlo, is it? Dear old Monte. I remember a wizard weekend I had there. August 39, that was. Wonderful weather, wonderful wine, wonderful women. Especially one, the daughter of a count she was. 
We had a flutter at the casino one night, and just when we were completely cleaned out, I opened my cigarette case, saw a hundred franc notes, and I said that... going out anyway. Michael, we mustn't. Not here. Why not? Someone might come in. What does that matter? Oh, it would all have been so wonderful. Somewhere else. But darling, it is a job and we're together. There are so many people. That makes it easier. I'm frightened. I keep thinking they know. That girl, she looks at me so strangely. Don't be silly, darling. How could she possibly know? Michael. Supposing we're found and made to go back. Nobody knows where we are, or what we're doing, or anything. We've got one whole week together. Let's make the most of it. Darling. Uh, miss, can you tell me if Miss Ellen Andrews has checked in yet, please? Miss Andrews? Yes. Yeah. Miss Andrews has cancelled her reservation, sir. Cancelled it? Are you sure? Quite sure. What, did she leave any message for me? M my name's Gardner. Mr. James Gardner. Yeah, that's right. It's a letter for you. Yeah, thank you. about your girl? Yes, thanks. I thought you were saving that for her. So I was. Four ruddy months I went without my ration so she could have it. Crazy on it she was. When I was stationed at Pompeii, I used to see her in the evening and she always used to say, you got any chocolate, Jimmy? I do love chocolate. For four months I didn't have a bite. I even bought the ration off a bloke that had bad teeth. And she goes and walks out. No. Sometimes I thought to myself, what wouldn't I give now for a bit of natty? And then I thought, no, I'll save it all for her, she's worth it. I must have been mad. Well, I'll show her. Well, what you gonna do? I'm gonna eat it. Every ruddy bar of it, even if it kills me. I think I've overbaked my new perm. Oh, when I go out in the wet, it frizzes up like anything. I think it's very nice. So it ought to, considering what it cost. Still, I always say, what's money for? You don't get much chance to spend it in service, so why not blew it all on your holiday and have a real good time? Don't you think so? I hardly know. I haven't had a real holiday for 20 years. Cool. Whatever sort of job did you have? Why didn't you change it? I couldn't. You see, I was looking after my mother. She died two months ago. We always went to Torquay in the summer. Always the same rooms, full of old people, all with patent medicines on their tables. I know. In the morning, I used to push Mother in her bath chair along the front until she'd say, well, dear, I think we've had the best of the day. And then, then we'd go in. In the afternoon, we knitted, and in the evening, we sat up till the nine o'clock news. Then bed. Then another day, just the same as the last. Poor Mother. I know she tried not to be difficult. And I really think she was very happy in her way. But you weren't, I. Well, you couldn't have come to a better place than this to take you out of yourself. I hope you're right. At any rate, I felt I couldn't stand Torquay again, ever. I wouldn't go anywhere else but here, not for the world. I shall come back even after I'm married. Are you engaged, then? Well, not exactly, but I'm expecting to be by the end of the week. Why, is your young man here, then? I hope so. 
Oh, we must be this time. Every year I says to myself the same thing. Elsie Dawson, I says, there are 5,000 people in this camp. Suppose 2,000 are males and half of them are free and unattached. And surely one of them must be looking for you. And it's up to me to spot him first, before anyone else does, if you follow me. That's the trouble. They never do. Follow me, I mean. Do you think man is still the hunter? I'm afraid it's I don't know much about that. Sort of Farley Radio calling all campers. We would like to remind all parents that there's a special tea served daily in the junior games room for all children who do not want to stay up for the evening meal. Don't forget, take the kiddies along to the junior games room at four o'clock. Does that sort of thing go on all the time? Pretty well. Why don't you like it? I don't think I can stand it. Oh, you'll get used to it. In a day or two, you won't notice it at all. Everything okie doke, sister? Hi, right, Steve. Come here. What's the matter? This cork's loose. Hmm. So what? I, uh, I have one for the road. Hmm. I should think you did. Well, here we are. Meal tickets for two. You keep your mind on these, I'm not on that. Okay, okay, but, uh, what about a quick one before we start in? Okay. Only remember, we're gonna make our expenses and a bit over. There's, uh, there was a bit on the bus that, uh, I'd like to make over. Did you see it? Yeah. Hit you up and down for my liking. I like mine just a little more straight. The day you like something straight, I'll hang the fags out. Well, here's a spot of luck. We don't need luck. Just you deal them in the right places. Come on, let's go out and find the customers. Limey, haven't you finished unpacking yet? You're like the donkey's tail, all behind. <laughs> I'll put this across your behind if you don't turn it up. You found them yet, Mother? No. You'll have to wear what you come down in. I can't. They draw my feet sonny chronic. Baby's very quiet. See what he's doing, Joe. And tell him not to. My shoes. And my toothbrush. It would be. You might look after him, Mother. Oh, I haven't got eight eyes like an octopus. Did you pack my hair all like I asked you, Mum? Oh, did I? Wait a minute. Yes. I remember packing it plain as anything. Here, you remember me putting it in, don't you, Joe? I can't remember nothing. My mind's a blank. Uh, what do you want to go around and put that muck in your head for, anyway? You don't want me to go around looking like you, do you? One more crack like that and I'll crown you. Haven't you two finished unpacking yet? That's right. Come on, roll up, roll up. Plenty of room inside. What do you want? Can I help you, Mum? No, dear. Just leave me alone and I'll sort everything out in my own good time. Sure? Yes. You are in a mess. I think I'd take baby for a walk. No, dear, he's all right. Nearly his bedtime anyway. You get out and enjoy yourself. What about you enjoying yourself? I like having him. He's no trouble. And you ought to get out and have a good time while you're on holiday. It's supposed to be your holiday too, you know. I'd be quite happy if only everyone will leave me alone. <laughs> all right. Here's the iron. Come on, Harry. Now perhaps I can get on. You shouldn't keep the kid away from her so much, Mother. It's not natural. It ain't natural for her not to have an husband, and she won't find one moping around with a kid. All right, all right. What do you say you did with my binoculars? Oh, you and your binoculars. Makes me wild every time I look at them. Fancy swapping our good pram for rubbish like that. What good's a pram to you? Now, Joe, no need to be vulgar. Where's baby? How should I know? Well, look, I can't do everything. Oh, you've been quick. I don't believe in wasting time. I'm putting on the wolf face straight away. Who's the wolf? That REF type. We've got a swimming date. Why don't you come? You might find someone, too. I don't think I will, if you don't mind. Oh, snap out of it, Joe. You didn't come here to spend your time knitting, did you? We all know you took a bad knock when Bill was killed, but that was ages ago. Only two years. Look, Bill was a grand type, but you can't spend the rest of your life carrying a torch for him. He wouldn't want you to. Just not interested in anyone else. I might just as well go about looking like a wet weekend because Ronnie's on the run. I'm sorry, it's just the way I feel. I don't think Ron would like it either if he knew. Oh, Ron wouldn't mind. When we got engaged, he said he wasn't the type to tie a girl down. He's very broad-minded. Perhaps it's just as well he is. Are you going to tell him everything you do this week? He's not that broad-minded, dear. <laughs> Come on, get in your swimsuit and let's give the locals an eye for Okay. <laughs> Body 
radio calling all campers. Dinner will be served in two minutes' time, so would you please make your way to the dining hall now? Dinner in two minutes. Thank you. So I said, where are we? And the navigator said, I haven't got a clue, old chap. I remember it very well, because that was the night we bombed Hamburg, and boy, was that a wizard prank. I thought you said you were in fighters. No, no, that happened way back in 1940. I was shifted to Bomber Command. Spent most of my time on night operations. I'm glad to leave that. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, come along in. I was feeling a bit cold this side. <laughs> Thanks ever so. Mm -hmm. I say, haven't we met before somewhere? Well, I'm sorry. I don't think I've had that pleasure. Good evening, campers. Enjoying your dinner? Yes! <laughs> well, that wasn't much of a response, was it? Let's try again. Yes! <laughs> I think it's gonna be all right here. <laughs> better had be. Now, all that sort of stuff, give me the willies. I can do it in the hand of cars myself. I suppose you wouldn't care for a game. No, I can't shuffle the pack. I've, I've hurt my hand. Ah, now what'd you do to it? Well, I was leaning out the front of my bus one day and run over it with a front wheel. <laughs> Huh? Like some more plums and custard. I don't want mine. No, thanks. You ever play poker? Well, uh, <laughs> not much. Uh, you pick it up in no time. Uh, why don't you come over to our shelly one, though? Hello, campers. Still enjoying your dinner? What's the matter, Val? I was just thinking. Supposing Auntie phones the school and finds I'm not there. It doesn't matter who she phones or what she does. She won't find us here. You promise you'll forget it? I'm sorry. I will try. And now, Captain, we'll be glad to know we have a grand entertainment for you tomorrow morning. At 11 o'clock, there will be a display of trick diving at the swimming pool. And for the way, all those wishing to enter from the tennis tournament must stand in their lanes before 3 p.m. or they have a panic. should go by, it's his hair oil. He'll want it in the morning, you know what he is. Okay, good night, Mum. Good night, dear. And just remember, you're here to enjoy yourself, so don't worry. I'm all right, and don't you worry about me. You know what? Jam! Oh, I just came to leave the hair oil for Harry. So let every lad turn to the last on his left and give it a big friendly kiss. Well, now that we're all quite happy, let's have a spot of knees up, Mother Brown.
Yes, Fancy behaving like that. I tell you, I was only doing what the band leader said. It's the way you did it. I don't know when I felt so ashamed. This is Farley Radio calling all campers. Here's your answer, wishing you all a very Jam? good night. Good morning, everyone. Farley Radio calling all campers. Good morning to you once more. There's a bright and breezy day waiting for you outside, so shower leg, lads and lasses, rub the sleep out of your eyes, and get ready for another grand session of fun and games. We're paying for this. We don't want to waste it. Hi, sailor. You dropped something. Oh, it's you. Tear off. Look, I'm. Uh, I'm terribly sorry about last night. I. Didn't seem to feel too well. What do you expect if you stuff yourself with chocolates? Who told you? Your chalet mate. He's my brother. Well, then you you know about... Uh... Yes. You're packing it up, aren't you? Yeah, that's the idea. Why? Well, nothing to stay here for. Four months I've been kicking my heels at Scapa, looking forward to bright lights and lovely grub. And what do I find when I get here? Well, there's plenty of both here. Bright lights and lovely grub doesn't mean what you think it means. It's sailor's talk for going on leave, meeting your girl and having a good time. Bright lights and lovely grub. That's what everyone wants. Yeah, but they don't get them. Well, you won't get it by running away. Well, I won't get it if I stay here now. Rubbish. Look, you've paid for your holiday, haven't you? Yeah. Well, are you going to let her take that away from you, too? No. Look, uh, if I stay here, will you, will you come and have a drink with me? I don't drink. What do you do? I was just going for a swim. You can come along if you like. OK, it's a date. Only, no strings. How do you mean? I don't want you to get any wrong ideas. I'm just going to be someone you know. The girl lives next door. Okay? Okay. The girl in my chalet, she's fainted. You better fetch the camp doctor. Right. What's the matter? She's fainted. Leave her to me. I'll look after her. You better help her put her on the bed. Yes. No pillow. It's only a faint, I think. The camp doctor's on the way. Oh, please leave her to me. She, she's so afraid of strangers. Oh, all right. Oh, um, I'll do it. Oh, it's very good of you. I'm afraid I always stuff my handbag too full. I really must get it mended. I do hope she'll be all right. Val. Val, darling. In here, Doctor. You better go, young man. You can see her later. both ends was burning, I thought it was curtains for me. And I give you my word, it looked like being the end of the house of Hardwick. Are you the only one of the family left, then? Oh, all except my old man. When he dies, the place comes to me. I don't really want the house. It needs a regiment of servants to run it. I think I'll let it to a school and move into the home farm. I suppose you live there all the time. Oh, good heavens, no. Only weekends. I've got a little flat in Park Lane I use during the week. Oh, like me. I only go home for weekends, too. The rest of the time I'm in town. Not Park Lane, though. Ah, well, we must meet up one evening and have a spot of dinner. Mm. There's a marvellous little place in Mount Street. 
the head waiter knows me and can always be relied on to get us a steak or something special. Oh, I'd love that. Another drink on that. Oh, I don't think I'd bet I'm a little out of practice. Nonsense. Drinking's like riding a bicycle. Once learnt, never forgotten. One. Then I really must go see what my poor girlfriend's doing. Left her alone all evening. You'll do nothing of the sort. Who's going to stop me? I am. You and who else? You're hurting me. Oh, so sorry. I don't know my own strength. No, you certainly don't, caveman. I just heard a rumor there's a beautiful moon outside. What does that make me? Very dangerous. Drink up. Let's go and see if we can find it. I don't know that I can trust myself with you. I warn you, I can't. I'll take a chance. I don't know how to scream. You know what I fancy tonight, Mother? There's a concert on and a dance. Now I'm in the mood for a nice quiet game of snooker. Snooker? Oh. Well, you can watch. It's better than jitterbugging all over the place. What about it, Daddy? Uh, me? Oh, sorry, Dad. I can't play it. Well, it's time you learn. Come on, I'll show you. I haven't got the time. I've got a date. Some other time. Blimey. He's in and out like a puff of wind in the calendar. Kids, I don't know why we went in for them. They want to enjoy themselves, only human nature. Well, it strikes me there's a deal too much human nature in the world these days. How could there be? Well, there is, and I don't hold with it. Look, Joe, if you want to play snooker, how about teaching me? Don't be daft. I wouldn't know where to start. Snooker's a man's game. Well, are you coming to the concert or aren't you? Oh, Joe! <laughs> yes! That must be him. All right? Okay. Now, remember. Don't roll him too hard. Take it easy tonight. You don't have to tell me. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Oh, hello, Eddie boy. Hello. See you made it. Have a fag. Thanks. Take a pew. Already, eh? Already, eh? Oh, hear that, Charles? I should say we are. You don't believe in wasting any time. You know, I've got an horrible feeling I'm going to walk back from this holiday. <laughs> I see you've got the drinks. <laughs> hey, don't miss nothing, do we? <laughs> Yeah, gulp it down, boy. Tell him more where that come from. <coughs> Good stuff. How old is it? As old as it's ever likely to be. <laughs> he knows the right stuff when he tastes it, eh, Charles? Fix him up with some more. Oh, I, I, I can never shuffle, can you? No, I, I'm all thumbs when I do it. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> well, what are we going to pay for? I mean, we've got to pay for something, haven't we? Otherwise, there's no interest in the game, is there? No, I, I suppose not. Of course, I... Don't play a lot myself. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that <laughs> What's he trying to give us, eh? <laughs> How about a bob limit? A bob? Well, I was thinking of a tanner. I mean, just to start, like. Okay, Harry boy, tanner it is. We don't mind. We just play for the love of the game, don't we, Charlie? It's lucky he's letting us off light. I'm playing with my holiday money. Same with me. All I got left. Nine quid. No, no nine quid? <laughs> Why, he's a blinky millionaire. I mean, after all, nine quid's nine quid, isn't it, Charlie? Eh? Certainly is. <laughs> oh, little me. <laughs> right, off we go. First time round. Uh, um, uh, that's right, isn't it? What? <laughs> what a bunting first time round. Abby boy, this is your lucky night. Ah, ah, beautiful sight to see. You've heard this song of the farmer, South Bound South. I did it now, I'd like to be a farmer's boy and pick myself a wife. Ah, ah, get up and go with a beautiful life, dance. If ever you go down on the farm, just watch next time you go and see the farm hands doing their work, the going is rather slow. You lay, ah, ah, get up and a beautiful sight to see. You've heard the song of the farmer, South South South. I did the I'd like to be a farmer's boy and pick myself a wife. Ass, ass, get up there. Oh, what a beautiful life. Da -da -da. <laughs> well, that's my little party piece, folks. Now it's your turn. You know the number. Bobbing up and down like this. All together, are you ready? <laughs> Bobbing up and down like 
I'll be out there by you in a couple of bob out. They may build their ships, my now, bobbing up and down like this. But they can't be the boys of the bulldog breed. Now, bobbing up and down like this. Now, come on, this side, all together, sons of the sea. Up and down. Let's go for a walk. Bobbing oh. up and oh. down oh. like <coughs> that, dear lady. Sailing the ocean, bobbing up and down like this. Well, you certainly cooked us, John. Roast us, brother. You sure you got to go home? Afraid so. Dad would create like mad if he went round to my chalet and found out I wasn't in bed. That's all right. Suits me. You want taking in small doses. How much you done, Joel? Oh, about two of them a kick. I can see you and me walking home. Yeah, you're darn right. Now, I must be down over a quid. What have you made, Addie boy? Thirty-one bob. <laughs> it's not bad, eh? Uh, I say I hope you don't mind. Ah, come off it. We're not kids. We knew what we were doing. You want it? You keep it. Come back tomorrow and give us our revenge. All right, sure. I expect your luck will change. Uh, tomorrow night, same time? Tomorrow night, same time. Do you think we ought to, Charlie? Oh, it's only fair. If it was the other way around, we'd want to carry on. We can't pull out just because we're losing. All right. See you tomorrow, Harry boy. So long. So long. Good night, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I see you tomorrow? You don't want to spend all your time with me. Oh, do you, no? It's bad for you. You want to mix a bit. Who with? All those glamorous blondes at the pool. Oh, I haven't noticed any. When you come round tomorrow, I'll point them out to you. All right. What time? Oh, I can't. I forgot. I promised Mum I'd go on that coach trip across the moors. Well, all right. I'll come along and make sure you get back safely. No. Look, I'll see you at 11 o'clock. Good night. Joan. Hey, you two. Would you mind shoving off? This isn't a reception area, and it's booked. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, we didn't see you. Good night. Joan, where, where shall I meet you? I'll see you outside the ballroom until 11 o'clock. Good night. Good night. Bad staff work, old boy. You shouldn't have let her get away. Ah, then. Where was I? Hmm? material, kindly return it to the office building, as it is essential the owner should have it in time for the beauty competition. The trunks of a lady's swimsuit, white plastic material. Please hurry. Oh, hurry! Stop it! Oh, it's as hot as the side of the France. When I shut my eyes, I can almost imagine I'm back there. When you open them again, you must get a bit of a shock. Not a bit. First thing I see is Angela. Mm. Anything in the paper, Mother? Not really, no. Why keep your nose buried in it? Because I can't look up and keep my modesty. Oh, come off it. It's no good. I don't hold with all this undressing in public. It's good for you. Let's the sun get at you. I don't want the sun to get at me, thank you. Well, I can't see anything wrong with it. Can't you? Look at those two girls over there. You wouldn't think they were wearing anything at all. Well, they are. Worst luck. Joe, I get that's enough. Either you put those things away or I'm going. All right, all right. <laughs> Aren't you coming in, Binky? Wish I could. I'm afraid the old ticker's a bit dicky. Ever since I spent those five days in my rubber dinghy in the North Sea. Oh, well, I'm going to have a swim. I want to keep my weight down. You won't, my dear. A friend of mine who was up at Oxford with me, he's a hardest street specialist now, says that people always put on weight on a holiday. That's because some of them put on too much side. Oh, hello. Hello. And what's become of the metal, though? I don't know, and I don't care. 
Why don't you cut in? I can't swim. <laughs> I nearly can. Only I need someone to teach me. Will you? I haven't got the time. You've never got the time for me. All right. I think you come. What'll I do? Well, the first thing is, don't be afraid. Come on. Well, suppose I get fall in and get drowned. What can we do then? <laughs> don't fall in again. Hello. Hello. Who was that? Just a girl. What do you mean, just a girl? It was that woman from the dance hall, wasn't it? I suppose it was. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, a man of your age. Well, what am I supposed to do? Ignore her? You better add if you want me to stay here. Look, the beauty competition starts in 20 minutes. Tell me what I'm supposed to do about that. Give me those things for a start. OK, OK. Anything for a quiet life. I always think men like red toenails, don't you, Miss Harlan? I'm afraid I wouldn't know about that. Oh, you're writing, sorry. That's all right. Hello, campers. Are you all getting ready for the beauty competition? It starts in five minutes. Come on, now, lasses, give the lads a treat. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Don't be late. You've just five minutes left. That those boys does something to you, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, it reminds me of someone I used to know. You mustn't half have hated him for it to worry you like that. No, I was very fond of him. That's why I came here, really. I don't get it. There used to be a camp here in the last war. I mean, the one before the last, in 1918. Alan, he was the man, was stationed here. I came up to say goodbye to him. Go on. That's all. I never saw him again. Let's see, we'd be talking about it. It's a long time ago. I think if you don't talk about things, you get all bottled up inside. <laughs> but there. I expect you want to get on with your letter. Where does the announcer's voice come from? The control tower. The control tower? Sounds like a prisoner of war camp. <laughs> That's right. And we're the prisoners. <laughs> yes. We're the prisoners. One more announcement, campers, before we close down to the beauty contest. If you want to rise higher in the world, why not pay a visit to Farley Airport near the foreshore? Flights every half hour till 6 p.m. Charter a plane and take a bird's eye view of your chalet, if you can spot it. Feeling better? Yes, thank you. Nothing serious, I hope. No, just a faint. Aren't you going in for the beauty competition? Well, no, I... I wanted to, but she's not feeling very good, really. I'm quite all right. I just don't want to be stared at, that's all. Come along, Michael. You'll be late. And now, campers, the beauty competition is about to begin. So will all beauties please join the line Our parading round the pool over there. Uh, this is Jerry Wilmot, your holiday camp MC, calling all beauties. Come along there, girls. If you don't come of your own accord, we'll come and get you. Oh, come on, Joe. It's only a lark. Oh, I don't want to. It'd be different if I'd done myself up as you have. Me? I dare haven't done a thing. I look an absolute mess. Oh, come on. You don't need to be really pretty. Oh, I... Come on, my dear. Join in with all the other lovelies. I'm not going in. Oh, yes, you are. Come on, Bill. Uh, oh, that's a daisy. That's the idea. Now we're really getting somewhere. But surely there are still more of you beauties who'd like to give the boys a treat. Don't be backward about coming forward. Get yeah, right on the end of that line, parading round the pool. Say, you must have been beautiful babies. Just look at those eyes, those teeth, that hair. Yes, sir, every color that comes out of a shampoo bottle. Blondes, brunettes, redheads. I've never seen... Yes, it's not a bad collection of fillies. But you should have seen the turnout of the Battle of Flowers at Monty. And gentlemen, get a load of those luscious limbs. Remember, though, just look, don't touch. Hiya, Blondie! Oh, I see, what a smash you. <laughs> And now our visitor, the celebrated film star, Miss Patricia Rock, has arrived. <laughs> now, girls, I want you to stop and sit right where you are now, on the edge of the pool. Then go up to the rostrum, three at a time. Go up, face the judges, turn round once, and don't forget to smile and the very best of luck to you all.
ladies and gentlemen, the judges have selected the winners, and here they are. First, first is number 77. Number 77. Congratulations. You really deserve it. Thank you. Well, oh, what do you expect? She's young, she is every inch of her. Bread in the bone, son, that's what it is, bread in the bone. She always was a good-looking kid, takes after my sister Edie. Your sister Edie? She's nothing like her. She's the spitting image of my Aunt Agnes, and you know it. Now, look, Mother, I told I you... I can tell you which one she's like. Oh, can you now? You told me which one you can't rely on to keep a promise, and that's the one she's like. Oh! Here, I, well, here just a Joe. minute. I want to know what he meant by that. Don't you go interfering in something that's not your business. What, my own daughter, not my business? She's not your daughter, she's mine, and you leave her manager own oh, affairs. Charlie good show. You made the rest of them look like a lot of cold spam. Wait a minute, where are we going? Well, I can see you wanted to be rescued from that mob. Did you see that? Yeah. Of all the nerve. Oh, I suppose he's got loads of money. Rolling in it. Of course, he never spoke to her before, but now she's the beauty queen. I don't know about you, I feel like a drink. <laughs> okay, sailor. We'll certainly use one. I think people who pinch other people's people are the end. Don't you? That's right. Can't trust anyone these days. That's right. Can't keep anything to yourself. That's right. And to think if it hadn't been for me, she wouldn't have gone in for the beauty competition at all. That's right. Finished your drink? You weren't going to suggest another one, were you? No. Oh. Hello. I was just looking for you. What's the matter, Val? Go on playing, please. But, Val... Don't stop. I, I don't want you to stop. I can't go on playing while you're crying. Darling. Oh, Michael. Darling, what is it? Michael, we, we've got to get married. We must. I didn't mean to tell you, but... I'm going to have a baby. Val, are you sure? That doctor. When I fainted, he told me. Michael, what are we going to do? We'll find a way. What? I don't know. But we'll find something. Darling, everything's against us. <laughs> Hello, girls. I knocked for you last night. I heard you. You mean you were awake? I was shilling peas for tomorrow's dinner. Let me pass, please. Now, look. I want a partner for tennis. Try some other department. This one's busy. Now, snap out of it. I thought you were an intelligent girl. I am. Too intelligent. Well, whatever I've done, I'm sorry. Now, will you play? <laughs> Not if you insist on breaking my wrist. <laughs> All right, Romeo. Hold on here while I get my racket. I'll be waiting. You'd better be.
Where's Angela? I'm going to get her tennis racket. So you got your own way again? Well, it looks like it. You know, I don't think I like you at all. Well, don't let it bother you. I shan't. Did your father ever give you a good hiding when you were a kid? He tried it once, and I nearly bit his thumb off. He never tried it again. Nice little chap. Seen Jimmy lately? Well, the last time I saw him, he was at the pool, teaching a smashing redhead the breaststroke. How interesting. I'll go and watch. Cheerio. See you at the old Bailey. Hey, sailor. I want a word with you. What about? You owe my girlfriend an apology. I do? Yeah, she didn't let you down. She waited three quarters of an hour at the ballroom. Yeah, so did I. Then you must have been the wrong one. Well, I didn't know there were two. Well, there are. You better start some fast thinking. You've got some explaining to do. Where is she now? In the lounge with Binky. With him? Oh, it's all right. She's only keeping him out of mischief while I get my tennis things. He's my bloke, Jimmy. Well, if he was my bloke, I wouldn't leave him with the prettiest girl in the camp. I happen to trust Joan. It's him I don't trust. I wouldn't trust him with my grandmother. Oh, if she's anything like you, she'd be quite safe. Do you mind if I sit here? Hmm? No, of course not. Oh, dear, I feel worn out. How come? I dreamt I couldn't sleep last night. This morning I'm as tired as if I hadn't been to bed. You want to stay awake next time and get a good night's rest. What's the matter? Smart of my nose? No. It's just I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before. I never forget a face. Ah, that's the Hardwick profile. Once seen, never forgotten. Cigarette? That's it. Now I know. It's all coming back to me. Hendon. What are you talking about? Your cigarette case. Don't you remember? You were staying at the old ball at Hendon. I was working there. And you left your case behind. Really? Yes. It was in the drawer of the table by your bed. I found it when I came to do the room. You were ever so grateful. You gave me a pound note. <laughs> so I did. Fancy you remembering. Oh, I didn't often get a tip like that, I can tell you. I remember thinking, it's a real gentleman, that Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. That's what you were called there, Mr. Geoffrey Baker. I remember bringing your letters out here. <laughs> Not so loud. Now, look, Elsie. You're a smart girl, and I'm going to take you into my confidence. I'm here on a special job, incognito. What's that? Well, you know, different name and all that, sort of disguise. Why? Well, Scotland Yard have sent me down here on a special job to keep a lookout for someone. Who? Look. You must keep this to yourself. Promise? Cross my heart. You've read about the mannequin murderer. Yes. Well, we believe that he may be here. <gasps> here? Oh, it's only a guess, of course, but I've been sent down to keep a lookout. Oh, I'm ever so glad you were. I won't breathe a word to a living soul, will you? Just shows you never can tell what's going to happen to you on a holiday. Well, listen, it's not the sort of thing to talk about. It's our secret. Just you and me. Just you and me. Oh, doesn't it sound romantic? Angela. Where's Joan? How should I know? Where is she? I don't know and I don't care. She was with you last? Take your hands off me. What have you done with her? I haven't done anything with her. <laughs> what you would have done if you'd have had the chance. I thought you were going to play tennis. With that lady killer? No, thanks. What's he done? Need you ask. Someone else? Wonder he can keep count. Never mind. You're better off without him. Oh, leave me alone. I'm feeling mad. Anyway, why aren't you with Jimmy? I haven't seen him. You know what he did yesterday? Waited at the other ballroom. That's his story. Oh, I think he was telling the truth. After what's just happened with Binky, you think he's telling the truth? Maybe you're right, pal. You bet I'm right. From now on, I'm going to find myself something better to do. Well, where are you going? I uh, thought I'd just drop in to let you know that I've done him good and proper. Done who? This bloke, Binky. You beast! Where is he? Well, I don't know. I don't care much. I... Oh, Binky! Uh, I, I thought she'd... You better go and wash your face. Oh. Lovely view, isn't it, Mother? Yes. 
There seems to be more sky here somehow. That's because of the houses. But there aren't any. That's what I mean. It's nice having time for a real talk, isn't it? Hmm. I can't think when we had so much to say to one another, can you? No. Quiet, isn't it? Know why that is? Because we haven't got the children with us. Funny how you never realise how fond you are of children till you get away from them. Joe? Yeah? Joe, seeing all these women at the camp all poshed up makes me wonder sometimes if I'm not getting a bit dowdy for you. What, you? Don't be daft. Women who go locking about in a pair of panties and a brazier are all right at the seaside. Give me something plain in the home. Oh, Joe, that's nice of you. Joe, I wonder when we was last on our own like this, you and me. Well, I can tell you when. It was on our honeymoon. Ah, oh, that was a lovely afternoon. Remember we took a thrifty bus and walked right over the golf links to the waterworks? Oh, Joe, let's go there again one day. We will. The next Saturday after we get home, we'll go. Oh, no, not that Saturday, dear. That's the Saturday you're whitewashing the kitchen. It'll have to be the Saturday after. Well, I can't do that one. It's my dark match at the Legion. Oh. Oh, well, we'll go one day. Yeah. One day we really will. He's a lovely age, isn't it? You must be very proud of him. I suppose I am. What's his name? Jeremy. I spoil him dreadfully. I'm afraid I'm a very bad mother. Nonsense. Babies love to be spoiled. Have you taken him to the Punch and Judy show yet? No, where is it? I'll show you. I often go and watch myself. The children are more fun than the play. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, just a minute. Hello? Is that kid really yours? Yes. You never told me? You never asked me. You're married, then? Of course I'm married. Don't imagine I'd have a child like that if I wasn't, do you? I wouldn't, know. Uh, maybe if I imagine less about you in the future, I'll be better off. Suit yourself. Thanks, I will. Oh, Miss Harmon, I think I've got something of yours. Must have dropped out of your bag the other day when you came in. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is mine. I wouldn't have lost it for anything. I couldn't help looking. Is that you? <laughs> yes. And the soldier? That's someone I used to know. We were going to be married on his next leave. Was he killed? I don't know. We could never find out. His name wasn't in any of the casualty lists. I waited and waited. And he just didn't come back. I'm so sorry. World's full of unhappy people, isn't it? You shouldn't think that at your age. You ought to be happy. But you're not, are you? No. This morning I passed the ballroom and I stopped to listen. He plays beautifully. How long were you there? Just long enough to know that you're very upset about something. I wish you'd trust me. I might be able to help. You can't help us. Nobody can. What's the trouble? We want to get married and we can't. Why not? My aunt wouldn't consent, for one thing. Have you asked her? Oh, yes. What about his parents? Won't they help? He's only got a mother and she's terribly poor. She couldn't do anything. Then Michael must make up his mind to get a job. But he doesn't know anything except music and he can't earn anything of that yet. Besides, his career means everything to him. He's worked at it ever since he was a child. I, I couldn't ask him to give that up just to keep me. There isn't only you to think of now, is there? Then you did hear her. I'm afraid so. And I'm glad I did. Perhaps I can help you now when you need it most. No one can help us. It's hopeless. Listen, my dear. Leave me alone. Leave me alone.
Stick. What about you, kid? Stick. Pay 21s. That's me. 18, me. Ah, never mind. You can't win all the time. Yeah, you Charlie boy. Yeah, well. Off we go again. No more for me. I must get back. Ah, oh, you can't stop now. You'll get a winning hand any minute. You didn't ought to leave the table when you're losing, sonny boy. Sorry, I'm... I'm cleaned out. We'll, uh, We'll take an IOU. No. I've lost enough. What about these? There's a tenner here, you know. I'll pay you. When? Uh, tomorrow. You wouldn't let us down, would you? I'll get it. Honest, I will. Well, I shouldn't be too long about it. Otherwise, you might have to show these to Dad. I said I'll pay you. I will. Well, that's got to the bottom of that little well. Who's next on the list? We'll, uh, we'll have a look round tomorrow morning. I've... Uh, I've got other things to think about tonight. Hello. Haven't you been in yet? I have a good mind to push you in like you did me the other day. Back it up. I'm not in the mood for larking about. Oh dear. Did he get out of bed the wrong side this morning? I have a good mind to drown myself. Don't be silly. You can swim. What's up? You look as if you lost half a crown and found sixpence. I've lost a darn sight more than half a crown. Well, it's not for it then. Oh, don't be daft. I've been gambling. I've lost a fortune. Gambling? How thrilling. It may be thrilling to you, but I've got to find a packet of dough from somewhere. Well... I've got three pounds in the post office. You can have that if you like. Three pounds? That's no good. It'd be just a drop in the ocean. Oh. What will you do then? I shall just have to end it all. What else go and tell Mum? <laughs> Off you go. Mum, I must talk to you. I... Oh. Well, what is it? Mum, can you lend me 19 pounds? Nineteen pounds? Why, whatever for? I've lost it. But how could you? You never had nineteen pounds to lose. No, that's just it. You don't mean to say you've been betting? No. Playing cards. Oh, I'll pay you back, Mum. I promise I will. I'll... I'll sell my bike. What, and go to work in the Rolls Royce, I suppose? I'll give you five bob extra every week. It's no use, Harry. I just haven't got it. You'll have to ask your dad. Oh, I'd rather go to prison. Oh, don't be silly. Cool to see enough, Nippy. Had a swim? No, he hasn't. He's in trouble, Joe. Well, I'm not surprised. Breaking some girl's heart, I bet. He's lost some money gambling. Well, blow me over if there isn't one born every minute. What have you been playing? Pontoon. You must have been potty. Well, come on, how much? Nineteen quid. Nineteen quid? What was you playing for? Gold bricks? Do you know how long nineteen quid takes to earn? Of course I do. Could you... Could you lend it to me, Dad? Oh, no, my lad. You got yourself into this mess, you'll get yourself out of it. Oh, Joe, don't be hard on him. What am I gonna do? Don't ask me. You should have thought of that last night. You've got to learn your lesson, same as all the others have to. Thank you for nothing. You didn't really mean that, Joe. Of course I did. Son of mine, can't handle a pack of cards. Finally go to my old dad and told him I lost 19 quid to tan the backside off of me. Oh, Joe, he's so young. Well, it's time he stopped being young. Give us my shirt. Farley Radio calling. This is Farley Radio calling all campers. Don't forget that the Grand Parade starts in 10 minutes from the north entrance. Thank you. I must be off. I wouldn't miss the Grand March for anything. Well, ta-ta. Thanks a lot. May I remind all campers once more to assemble at the North Gate if they wish to join the Grand Parade. Everyone is welcome, the more the merrier. So come along and join the party starting in 10 minutes. And now for the general program of today's events. At 10.30 a.m. there's a boxing session in Farley Stadium. Valuable prizes for the winners of each match. At 11.45 a special film show will be given in the theatre, including the Farley Newsreel. Come along, you may be lucky enough to see yourself on the screen. At 3 p.m., there's a grand party for children with a comedy conjuring show thrown in. All kiddies are welcome. 
And now I want to give you all a personal invitation for tomorrow evening. It's the farewell dance of the week. The hall starts rolling at 8 o'clock, and I hope everyone will be there to keep it rolling. We want this to be a really memorable night. And for that reason, we'd particularly like all those of you who have no friends or family here with you to make an effort to come along. You won't regret it. Paul Jones has a knack of bringing lonely people together better than anyone else I know, and with very happy results. So don't forget, I shall expect you all. Tomorrow's dance is the last of the holiday, and the one you'll remember till you come again next year. And you will come again, won't you? Who's there? Who is that? Oh, I'm sorry. I ought not to have come. No, don't go. Did you want me for something? As a matter of fact, it was your voice. It reminded me of someone I used to know a long time ago. I'm afraid you must think that sounds very foolish. Oh, no, it often happens. It's strange how easily a tone of voice can bring back the past. You know, Yours sounds vaguely familiar to me. Does it? Yes, I... Perhaps it's... No, 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 no don't tell me. Go on talking, let me see if I can trace it. But do sit down, won't you? Since I lost my sight, voices mean a great deal to me. Yes, I suppose they would. You'd be surprised how much people reveal through them. Much more than they realize. Do they? Oh, rather, you can almost tell what they're thinking. That must be very embarrassing sometimes. It's odd, but your voice does strike a chord in my memory, and yet I can't quite place it. Have we met before? If we did, it was years and years ago. Ah, you have me. You see, I was burned up by a mine in 1918. Lost my sight and my memory, too. No one knew who I was. Didn't even know my own name. How awful. It was for a bit at the time. But I've been extremely lucky. Lucky? Well, in meeting my wife. She used to come and read to me when I was in hospital. You're married, then? Oh, yes. Very happy. We got two sons. I'd like to see a picture of them. Oh, thank you. There they are. Yes, they're noisy little devils, but... <laughs> they must be a great consolation to you. They are. Life would be very empty without children, wouldn't it? Yes. There's only one thing that troubles me. I can't help thinking there may have been people who were fond of me, but who are unhappy because they think I'm dead. Now, that's why I was so interested when you said you thought you knew my voice. Am I the man you thought you knew? No. You're not the man I knew. I'm so glad you're happy. I have every reason to be. Come over here a minute. Out there. Do you see what I see? What do you see? One of the strangest sights of the 20th century. The great mass of people, all fighting for the one thing you can't win by fighting for it. Happiness. When I first came here, I, I thought I couldn't stand it. The noise, the crowd, the frantic search for pleasure. Then I saw it wasn't really a crowd at all. Just Separate individuals, each one of them with a different set of problems and worries, hopes and fears. Each one of them tired and dispirited, eager for peace, and yet frightened to be alone. And I thought, if I could help to make them happy just for a while, if I could enable them to forget their everyday anxieties while they're here, then I've done a little to repay the great happiness the world has given me. I'm sorry if I sound a bit pompous over this, only people have been so wonderful since this happened to me that I felt I... Excuse me, man. Yeah? Would you tell them that Valerie Thompson is wanted in the front office? Oh, yes, all right. Right away. Just one moment, a short announcement. Attention, please. Attention, everybody. Will Valerie Thompson go at once to the front office? Valerie Thompson, wanted in the administrative building. Someone waiting to see you. Thank you. 
Look here, we, we seem to be talking about me all the time. How about you? Are you going... Well, it's very unusual, but I think you can use the camp controller's office for a little while. Thank you. Don't let her upset you, sir. I wish I were dead. Oh, come, my dear. Surely things aren't as bad as that. Valerie's aunt. She's turned her out of the house. I know it's my fault. I shouldn't have come here. But I just don't know what to do now. We'll see about that. Take her to my chalet, Michael, and look after her. I'll be there in Oh, thank you. Can I speak to you for a moment? I don't think I know you, do I? I'm Esther Harmon. I'm a friend of Valerie's. If you've come to plead to my niece, I might as well tell you straight away you're wasting your time. I finished with her and I told her so. You mean you've turned her out? Yes. A young girl like that? What do you suppose will become of her? That's no concern of mine. She should have thought of that before. You're very hard. Am I? Valerie's not my child, but I've given her a home for the last 14 years. It's meant a great deal of sacrifice to bring her up properly, but I've done it. And this is how she repays me, by bringing disgrace upon a decent family. Oh, it's not as bad as that, surely. Isn't it? How can I hold my head up among my friends now? Can you hold your head up if you turn a helpless girl into the street, in her condition? You're not trying to defend what she's done. I don't defend it, but I can forgive it. Well, I can't. I don't think we'll discuss the matter further. I've a train to catch. You can't just go like that and, and shirk your responsibilities. Valor is not my responsibility any longer. Let her go to the man who's the cause of the trouble. Haven't you ever made a mistake yourself? Never one of that kind, thank heaven. If you'd ever known what it means to love someone else better than yourself, I think you'd have understood Valerie and forgiven her. But I'll tell you this. If you go now without saying one kind word to that poor child, the thought of what you've done today will haunt you for the rest of your life. think she wrong, though. Well, I told you. If you didn't back it, it's your own silly fault. All right, all right, don't rub it in. I'm not rubbing it in, I'm just telling you. I got it straight from a bloke whose uncle washes Gordon Richard's second car. And wasn't I right? So what? For once in your life, you've got a good tip. Excuse me, I couldn't help hearing what you two lads were talking about. I suppose you don't know what won the 330. Oh, it's funny, we were just talking about it. It was the Laughing Lady. Oh. Why, are you a racing man? Oh, I like to have a bit on now and then. Anything for a flutter, you know. Not forgetting the pools, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you like a gamble, do you? When the missus isn't looking. <laughs> How's the Anne? Anne? Oh, that was for the old lady's benefit. What are you two lads drinking? Well, I'm on scotch, thanks. What about you? Same will do me nicely. Do it scotches, please, miss. I like a bit of fun when it's going. Trouble is, it's always going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's you, what were you thinking of doing tonight? Oh, nothing special. Then go up and have a look at the dancing. Not much else to do except booze up. <laughs> well, look here, old man. We got a bottle of scotch back at the chalet. The real stuff, too. Why don't you pop across and have one? Lead me to it. We usually have a quiet game of cards. Passes the time away. Suits me. <laughs> oh, hiya, kid. Hello. We're just going to take our mate here over to the chalet for a little game. Don't object to the girlfriend coming along, do you, Joe? Me? I'm all in favour. Hey, I came for a drink. Oh, we got some over there. OK. If you really have. Here, Joe, I've got a smack. I've got one for you, too. Is only a short one. <laughs> that reminds me of the one about the gavel and the ladybird. <laughs> <laughs> Cigarette. So, fetch Joe a drink, mate. <laughs> well, what's it to be? Poker? Pontoon? Oh, I don't mind. Pontoon, eh? That's the game where you have a banker, isn't it? Do you have two cards or three? I don't remember. Oh, two to start with, old man. Oh, of course. It'll come back to me. I'll get the hang of it in no time. Pontoon's where you are the stick or twist. Stick or twist, that's it. Well, I won't twist you blokes, you can be sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's slip a little bit. Hello, 
Mum. Hello, dear. Want anything? No, thanks, Mum. I, uh, I just came to see how you were uh, getting on like. No, not so bad. I'm a bit tired tonight. There's, uh, there's nothing I could be doing for you, is there, Mum? Harry, are you feeling all right? Yes, I'm all right. Crying being fed up to the back teeth. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I still can't lend you the money. Maybe I can bring Dad round. Don't talk to me about Dad. If you ask me, he's nothing but a whited hypocrite. Harry, what a thing to say about your dad. This is serious, Mum. Straight it is. If you'd seen what I'd just seen, you'd know what I mean. Out with it, then, for goodness sake. No, I'd uh, better not say anything. It'll only make mischief. Harry, I'm your mother and you must tell me everything. What is it? It's Dad. He's gambling. No. Fact. He's playing pontoon over in the chalet with them two chaps and the blonde. You're off your head. I tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. After the way he led off at me, too. Pot calling the kettle black, I'd say. Can't believe it of Joe. I simply can't. My word, I hope they put him through it. I bet they will, too. Oh, dear. First you and now Joe. What am I going to do? Never mind, Mum. You've still got me. I'll look after you. Honest, I will. I'll pay twenties. That's me. That's better than two, isn't it? You should have shown those up, you know. <laughs> if he's going to start this sort of caper, I'll go straight to my sister Daisy. <laughs> Honest, I will. Well, why should you get out? He's the one to go, and I'll tell him so. Stick. <laughs> Beginner's luck, that's what it is. I haven't had a pack of cards in my hand for months. Right, make your stakes. It's a change to see them losing. Shut up, you. <laughs> Don't you shout at me. Shut up, you'll feel the back of my hand across your face. No need to quarrel, children. Now, what are you boys doing? I'll stick. Buy one. Cost you half a crown. Come on. Stick. You got something good, eh? Well, now, what have I got? Oh, 13. Well, I'm blessed I take everything again. We're not finished, are you? Yes, I have. Haven't you got enough? Well, I'm not tired. I'm finished too. You clean me out. Well, well, well. And I thought I was settled for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Wouldn't like to throw your watch in, would you, Steve? No, I wouldn't. OK, well, even if you are broke, you won't need your bus fare home, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you! Whoa. All right, that settles it. I'm going. You coming, Joe? Yeah, I might as well. The lads don't want to play anymore. Take me with you. All right, as far as a swimming pool. And then? If you're not out of my sight in ten seconds, I'll throw you in. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Not gone to bed yet? I wonder you dare speak to me, Joe Uggett. What's up? You ought to know what's up. I oh, wouldn't have believed it of you. Believe what? <laughs> Don't you play the innocent with me. I can see through you. So can I. I'll see through you in a minute if you don't say what's up. Don't you start shouting at me, Joe Uggett. And don't look at me like that, either. If you think I'm going on slaving me fingers to the bone while you go chucking your money away like the man who broke the bank at Monte Cristo, you can think again. I'm going to me sister Daisy's, and you can get one of your lady friends to come and queue and clean and cook for you, cos I've had enough of it. Oh, blimey, what's all this in aid of? Harry saw everything. Hmm. Found out, am I? They are, Mum. See? He admits it. Nothing more I can say, then, is there? Nothing. Well, before I go, maybe you'll take these as a farewell gift, like. My IOUs. Where'd you get them? I want them. Dad. And a bit more. There's your nine quid at it. Oh. Mother, there's four quid for you. Buy yourself a new hat or something. Joe! How'd you do it, Dad? Oh, those two lads are just beginners, son. They like to play with five aces. Five aces? Hmm. I went one better. I played with six. <laughs> oh, Joe, you are a one.
Oh, yeah. Yes, darling? I've thought of a way we can be together for always. How? You shouldn't have to worry about your mother, my aunt, or money, or anything. That sounds too good to be true. Michael, look. Val, you're crazy. No, I'm not. I, I'm saner than I've ever been. I, I see it all quite clearly. No, Val. No! You're afraid. No, I'm not. You don't love me anymore. Oh, yes, I do. If you really love me, you won't let me suffer. Valerie! Michael! Hello, you two. Oh, what a climb, isn't it? I'm quite out of breath. I saw you on the head as I came up the path, and I... I thought we might walk back to the camp together. It'll be company for me, if you don't mind. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. We'll have to hurry if we're going to be back for lunch. You were terribly near the edge just now, weren't you? It's never wise, I think. That's the way accidents happen. I'm desperate about all this. I, I just don't know what to do for the best. How old are you, Michael? Twenty. You're still only a boy, aren't you? But you've got to make a man's decision. The whole of Valerie's life may depend on how you treat her now. What do you mean? How much does your music mean to you? Well, it used to mean everything. Until I met Valerie. And now? I still think I might be pretty good. Mm. If you were the only one to be considered, I'd say take your chance. But you aren't. There's Valerie, and the child. Just tell me what you want me to do. You may have to give up music and take a job. Of course I would, like a shot, but... I still can't see the way out. I think I can. When my mother died, she left me a big house. Much too big for a lonely old woman like me. You and Valerie had better come and live in part of it. Oh, no. We couldn't do that. Why not? That's very kind of you. But that's no reason why we should sponge on you. Oh, you'll have to do something in exchange. What? Two things. First, I want you to see that Valerie never has an unhappy moment because of you. I'll do my best. The other's more difficult. I want you to go away on your own for an hour or two and make up your mind about yourself. Maybe you could be a great pianist. Maybe you're only a second rater. Somewhere deep down inside yourself, you'll know what it is. Only remember, there are very few geniuses, and a great many fairly clever young men. And an awful lot of the clever young men are playing trios in tea shops or holiday camps. You go and think about it. And if you're sure it's got to be music, we'll find a way. And if you're not, we'll have to find you a job. But in either case, Valerie comes first. Agreed? Agreed. What about you and me shaking a leg, Mother? No, nah, not tonight, Joe. Come on, it's our last chance. What's eating you? Old age and arthritis. Man, you go and have a dance. I'll watch. All right, old timer. Not dancing, Mrs. Huggins. Then show. Let's show them a spot of pucker boogie woogie. Oh, I never boogie woogie in my life. You haven't? Well, now's the time to begin. Come on. Oh, no. All right to me. Maybe I use the wrong toothpaste or something. Perhaps it's because you squeeze the tube from the middle. <laughs> Come on, let's dance.
next dance is an excuse me waltz. Change your partners as often as you like. And boys, if you see a nice girl, now is the time to grab her. All together now. Old age and arthritis. You dance, Joe. I'll watch. Well, I couldn't help it. Jay swept me off my feet. I didn't see you struggle. Well, when a girl can change her mind, can't she? Well, you better start changing it back again, then. Oh! Excuse me. Excuse me. You've got nerve. Ah, uh, you'll know you like it. That's what you think. Oh, come on. Let's make it up. This is the last night. You don't deserve it. Why? Here, 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 Daddy Abigo. A little lady standing over here solo. She's waiting for someone. A lot you care. There you are, Lassie. All yours and coupon free. Get together. That's it. Good luck. I'm sorry. What about? Not exactly your fault. Well, I didn't want to force myself on you. Since you're here, you might try and look as if you're enjoying it. I am. Perhaps I am too. Joan, you mean? You mean? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd coming in for the last night get together. Let's uh, let's slip out for a walk. I'm not very good at walking. Right. Wouldn't think you're walking very far. I thought I'd made that quite clear. Will you? All right. I'll dash into the town tomorrow and buy the ring. Ah, take me with you. Well, of course. We'll go by bus and catch the later train. Mm -hmm. Good night, Binky. Good night. Now, look, don't get interested yet. Let's walk down the road by the sea. No, Binky, it's too late. I'm tired. Oh, it's quiet there and we can be alone. No, Binky, not tonight. Please. Hey, there's no need to get rough. You won't get anywhere with me that way. Come on, there was just a little fool. <laughs> that hurt, you big brute. Come on. Don't forget what your mother told you, Angie. Keep out the long grass and keep on walking. <laughs> Come on, you two. It's not a reception area. This seat's occupied. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. I'm sorry, chum, but you shouldn't have let it go, you know. It's only me. Oh, hello. Oh, I was just going in. Any news? What about? That chap you're watching. Oh, that? No, no, nothing yet. You'll tell me when there is, won't you? Yes. I'll tell you. Who is it you suspect? We can't talk here. Come for a walk. What now? Just down the road by the sea. We must be seen whispering here like this. All right. Better take my arm. It won't look so conspicuous. All right. And don't keep saying all right. All right. It's very dark, isn't it? Keep going. Mind is a stream. I've been ever so excited since you told me you were a detective. I haven't been able to sleep at night. I think to myself, fancy Elsie Dawson, knowing a man that tracks down famous killers. Some people are like that. 
everything happens to them, like you. I mean, you've been in the Air Force, you've seen different countries, met all sorts of exciting people. Nothing ever happens to me. What are we stopping for? A trembling. What's the matter? Frightened of something? Too near the edge? Frightened? I've never been frightened in my life. Never. All right, you're not then. Look, we ought to be getting back and you still haven't told me what you want me to do. Then stay here a while. If you want to. I do want to. I'm just getting a drink. Might as well see what you're doing. Put that out, you fool. Oh, all right, if you prefer the dark. Attention, please. Will all those leaving today be kind enough to hand in their chalet keys to the reception car? And campers, kindly remember, light luggage only on the coaches, heavy luggage on the lorry leaving the north entrance at 11 o'clock. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes? It may be nothing, really. It's Miss Dawson. I share a chalet with her. M42, you know. And, uh... Well, it's just that she didn't turn up last night. I see. I reported to the camp controller. I wish you would. You see, she's not the sort to stay out. I quite understand. I reported at once. Thank you. Goodbye, campers. We hope you've enjoyed your stay here as much as we've enjoyed having... Shall we coming on your train? Hmm. You don't mind if I write to you, do you? No, of course not. I bet you think writing's silly. Of course I don't. You do really, don't you? No, I said I didn't. All right, then I will. Bye, Harry. Goodbye. Coming, Angie? I'm waiting for Bink here. Can't think what's happened to him. He said he'd meet me here. Come in. Oh, hello. You the new tenants? Oh, I'll be clear in a jiffy. Then you can have this beautiful suite all to yourselves. Had a nice holiday? Ah, not too bad. Bit of a mixed crowd, you know. That's an advantage sometimes. Yes, plenty of people to choose from. But just look at the chalet. I mean, it's more like a prison cell. Hmm? In that case, you're going to feel quite at home, Mr. Hardwick. Squadron leader, actually. Uh, how did you know my name? Actually, I don't think that is your name, is it? Wouldn't Geoffrey Baker be nearer the mark? What the devil do you mean? Geoffrey Baker, alias Hardwick. We have a warrant for your arrest on a charge of murder. I have to warn you that it'll look out. Smart idea. Yours, Baker, hiding in this camp. It's taken us five days to pick up your trail. Well, I said I'd have a week. And by George, I've had it. <laughs> You've had it all right. Come on. Uh, all right, we'll look after your things, will you? It has been lovely, hasn't it, Joe? Best holiday we've ever had. Roll on next year. I don't know how I'm going to face a carpet sweeper again. <laughs> You're going to wear me. <laughs> I got it. Got what? Binky! What about him? Oh, I should have thought of it at once. He must have dashed off first thing this morning to buy the ring. He'll be waiting at the station. You'll see. You hope. <laughs> 